Okay, here we are at uh, stage two of our studio building project. We're going to be doing the live room, which uh, this is the sunroom, or which was the sunroom, going to be converted into the live room. And uh, we, the room is approximately, well, 28 and a half feet by 11 and a half. The ceilings about nine and a half feet up this way. I think we slope down to about seven feet over here. So uh, we've already done some work uh, that was done in early fall of 2001. In preparation for uh, doing most of the work inside for the winter. And that is we had, uh, I believe it was a 12 windows in here and we removed eight of them. And these are the spots here where the plywood is. Uh, so that was uh, the first thing that we did. We're going to keep four windows just for uh, eh, some natural lighting as well as uh, and some ventilation in here. We're going to need some nice breezy uh, air coming in here on those hot August days. I'm going to take a break there for a sec. Anyways, we've got all our windows locked off as well as we took out the one door on the side here behind the ladder and uh, that's just to uh, make it a little bit more soundproof I think we only really need one entrance in here uh, or two entrances actually I guess we're going to keep the one for the garage here that'll be a double door system as well like we did downstairs in the control room and uh, this one will also be a double door system steel doors the second thing we did was make sure we had the adequate ventilation in the roof ceiling area once it's sealed off and to make sure that would work because nothing was done in this room was just strictly built for a sun room it wasn't ventilated at all there just uh, and apparently it was used just for uh, more of a greenhouse by the previous owners to uh, they were into gardening and that's what they'd start their uh, plants off in this room so what we have to do anyways is get some ventilation in here and that consisted of a few things and uh, hopefully they work so what we did is we put this venting in here so off of the fascia outside we're going to have the airflow coming in through some holes that we drilled and uh, some venting that we put out outside it's going to flow through here and up through this area between each set of joists and we drilled some holes in these these blocks here that they put in with the original construction and there's two holes under here also for, for the venting and then again, I can get a shot of it here. We also drilled holes here to let the air flow through once it reached this point here. So the idea what we have going on here is on the outside of the building I drilled three holes and there's a vent out there. So that's the outside air that will be able to flow through and let the air hot air flow out as well. So it starts from back here, goes through here, and I vented it also into the garage. So any of the hot air to prevent ice jams in the winter and keep it close to the outside temperature in this ceiling area is going to go through there, as well as again, there's a few holes drilled over here with the vent on the outside. Now uh, you can see we this is the type of venting we put in here. We just drilled some holes. I drilled some holes through the uh, uh, soffit here. You can see them under there anyways. About every mm, six inches I think it was. So the flow will be uh, taken from the outside up through the ceiling area and out into the garage. 
And I guess it's a good thing too that our ceiling is on a little bit of a slope here, so the hot air will rise a lot easier. So I think it'll uh, it'll be all right. If not, I guess option two will be we'll just have to go on top of the roof later and just drill some, cut out some holes and put uh, some roof venting in there to help it out a bit. But we'll see how it goes with the way we have it right now. And then there's going to be an outside light here. And then there's the, the windows that were have been sealed off. And uh, later, once the inside's done, I'm, to improve the soundproofing, I'm going to take all this vinyl siding off here and put a two inch foam on the outside, which will increase the uh, soundproofing quite a bit, I would imagine, as well as keep the uh, improve the insulation value as well. And of course we needed power. There is no uh, outlets in here at all. So what uh, what I did was dig a trench around the outside of the house and ran, ran an underground cable and some PVC conduit and an 8-3 cable. So it's going to come out of the main panel in the basement and it runs around the house and we brought it up inside here to a sub panel. Uh, this is an 8 circuit sub panel. Be, there'll be more than enough uh, um, receptacles that we'll need in here. And uh, I'm just going to take a shot of this wiring here for reference so I can map it out maybe on, a, on some paper later so I know if, in the future if I have to drill holes in the wall I know where not to drill. I think we have, what do I have here, about six or eight receptacles on a separate circuit, like we did downstairs. And there's one, I guess a couple of them that are, a couple receptacles will be on the same circuit, but that's, uh, I think, just only one or two. This is going to be a double box here, and the one goes to the outside on the sensor light. Probably a little boring for you people watching, but this is just for my own future reference, like I said before. It'll be over real soon.
and this this wire here is right down the middle of the room. One goes off again to the floodlights. And the other is for a light fixture in the center of the room. Which goes down to the switch. I can see it. There we go. Now a lot of people might have noticed and asked themselves why drywall between the st stud walls between the studs. Well, the answer is I had a bunch of leftover drywall from the uh, control room project, and I thought to myself, well. Might as well use it and utilize it, and uh, it'll save me from putting a third layer or a second layer of drywall on the outside. So it's 5 8 drywall between each stud, and uh, again, this is to uh, maximize maximize the uh, sound uh, proofing capabilities of the room. So that's what we've done, and yesterday went around with the acoustical caulking again and sealed up any areas that uh, showed signs of having a little bit of a space between that uh, for, to the outside uh, world so we did that yesterday sealed it out nicely and in some areas we used uh, spray foam there's a couple areas like this that uh, weren't sealed properly. Now I tried something new yesterday. If you're, gonna, if you're wondering about what foams to use when you're doing this type of project, don't use a latex foam. I, I bought a can of that and it's just not the same as the uh, polyurethane foam, your regular yellow foam. It does. It's not as hard. It doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to cure as hard and uh, it's kind of Although you can, it's, it's latex and you can paint over it, it doesn't really serve the purpose that we need it for, to, and that is to uh, make, make things airtight. Well, I bought uh, two different types of uh, styrofoam, and the large sheets are an inch and a half. And what I'm going to do with those is swing over here because they have a two by two or in real terms a one and a half by one and a half I'm going to put the styrofoam here inside these where the windows were just to uh, increase the sound reinforcement And the other foam is just for between the joists and the ceiling. So what we're going to do in the ceiling here is what we pretty much did down in the control room. I'm going to put a 3 inch rock sewer safe and sound insulation. So the styrofoam will go up against uh, the styrofoam that we have here is actually three quarters inch, four feet pieces. So that's going to go on top of the styrofoam, on top of the insulation, and then just up against here to ensure that this area here is left open because it's going to be part of the venting. So we'll have approximately an inch and a half airspace between. the ceiling and the three quarter inch styrofoam and then you'll have your three inch rock sewer insulation under that. Now I should also also mention that these windows remaining four windows will be replaced these are just single plane or plain single pane storm windows and uh, I'm going to buy some 
all the best triple pane windows I can get and if there's something out there I can find that is actually uh, uh, created for soundproofing then I'll, I'll look into those also so the windows can be inserted here and down the line somewhere when recording is being done just to ensure that the room is totally sealed off I'm going to build some inserts for these cavities here probably the same construction as the walls are going to be and they'll just clip in they'll be sealed off with a good neoprene seal and just insert them in there and uh, that should do the job so we'll have windows when we need them and uh, total soundproofing when we need it keep the neighbors happy I'll uh, just pretty much running quickly through the stages that we're going to be doing but I'll I'll, I'll take uh, uh, video as we progress step by step but uh, just for a quick rundown this again this is your resilient channeling here that's going to go on to the studs then we're going to have three quarter inch MDF hardboard uh, and a layer of five eighths drywall on top of that and uh, then our finishing panel on downst downstairs and the same for the ceiling as well and for the floor we're going to put in a subfloor and I found this uh, interesting product that is actually made just I, I believe somewhere in Toronto it's called dry core flooring and uh, we'll take a walk in the garage later and look at uh, the materials that we're going to be using but uh, it's, it's, it's quite a interesting product it's uh, it's actually a floating floor and uh, I'll show you more detail on that later on this cemented area here will probably be carpeted just to uh, quiet things down a bit I'm going to leave the brick on the walls here I'm not going to cover that uh, just to keep this room live and, uh, for recording reasons. Uh, I want it to be a versatile room but what I'm going to do is probably put heavy curtains on rods and run them across all the way and even on this section of the brick wall so I can draw the heavy curtains and I can dampen the uh, sound reflections if I need to or I can open them up and use reflections off the hard surfaces to uh, to uh, capture different uh, sounds for different situations this area here of the house is aluminum siding which was once the exterior of the house of course so all, what I'm going to do is I have to take this off and I have to get in there because there's a couple of heat ducts that are in the ceiling down in the family room so I'm going to take those through the joists extend them and have them into this room so I'll take care of my heating as well as uh, there's going to be, I put a receptacle here 30 amp to uh, use a construction heater while I'm building here in the winter to keep it warm once I get the electrical hooked up but also for future if and I don't think I will but if I do need it because the heating isn't adequate enough coming from the house into this room I can always put that heater into uh, use and keep this place warm as well. And the garage door here, well, that's going to be definitely double doored, like the system that we have down in the control room. And uh, steel doors for security reasons as well. And this, some of the product, other materials in here again, this is familiar. From the, lot, from the first uh, video, this is your safe and sound 3 inch noise and fire protection insulation. It does a great job downstairs, and I'm assuming well, it's going to do just as good job here. Of course, we're, we're above ground here, so things have to really be sealed off. So, this is the 3 quarter inch MDF hardboard heavy stuff, expensive stuff 
this is uh, this these sheets four by eight sheets are thirty dollars a sheet so the thing is you got to pay for the good stuff and being like I said before being above ground uh, we want to seal it off as much as we can now downstairs I used half inch so we're going a quarter inch thicker here and I think it's uh, which I, I think it's called for in this situation uh, we got 26 of those so you do the math <laughs> and uh, the second layer again will be 5 8 drywall not as expensive and does a great job now this is the uh, flooring that I was speaking of earlier take a look at it it's two by two sheets and it's uh, well, these are together already Paid for. Get these apart. Basically, tongue and groove. No glue, no nailing required. There's a tongue part there. You just slip it in, and uh, they tell me it's going to hold. But on the back, interestingly enough, is this vinyl piece here which raises this panel off the floor so you can get air circulation in there as well as if, if any water should happen to get in in uh, your basement or uh, wherever you're using this material it will channel to the drain which is a great idea I and mean, being vinyl it won't mildew if you have proper air circulation under there which you probably will so I think it's going to turn out pretty good and and you also for studio purposes get uh, sort of a pseudo floating floor system going on which is uh, going to cut down considerably on any vibration going through the rest of your structure causing unwanted resonance of certain frequencies so and it also has a hard finish on the top here to protect it and then on top of this you can either put uh, an underlayment with carpeting or some type of a hardwood floor which I think we're going to go with in the, the live room and just like I said before to keep keep your options open for a livelier sound and if you want to dampen the sound we'll just get some big throw rugs and unroll them on top of the hardwood surface uh, if needed so that's what we're looking at right now so I'll keep you updated as we go stage by stage so until then talk to you later yeah, bye. Okay, folks, here we are, another s episode of uh, Live Room Studio Construction. And uh, what we've achieved so far, as you can see, is all the rock seal insulation on the stud walls. Let's give you a little bit of a tour here worked out pretty good everything sealed up nice and tight a nice layer in the ceiling there and the only thing is the only thing that took more time than expected was that uh, when the original owner built this sunroom 
none of the stud widths on the walls were the same for some unknown reason. Uh, as you can see, he uh, kind of built this in two stages, I think. He built this lower level here and put the window sill plate here on and then uh, must have started up on top here because, you know, all these studs are sort of offset around. So it just makes it a little more time consuming and difficult when you have to cut the stuff uh, separately for uh, uh, each, uh, each placement between the studs. But anyways, it's done, and that's a good thing. Got a little bit extra here. Overcompensated a bit, I think, but uh, that's okay. I'll be using that to uh, build inserts for the windows anyways. It'll all be used up in the end, I'm sure. What we're going to do next here is put the vapor barrier on. And before that, I'm going around the bottom portion, perimeter, to seal up to, with uh, acoustical seal between the floor and the bottom plate. There's a little bit of a gap there, you can see, and uh, you know, we're going to get either a little bit of draft or some sound coming in there. Uh, or perhaps even bugs. I'm sure there's some um, small enough insects that can crawl underneath that gap and uh, we'll just keep them out with that seal. Uh, the kind of ba vapor barrier we've chosen here is uh, 6 mil, nice and thick and uh, you can see the specs on it I think so it's pretty good stuff, it's safe, burns slow if it happens to catch on fire, which we don't anticipate. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so we're going to strap on the walls here and on the ceiling. And uh, that's about all I can tell you for now. We're going to have at her and it shouldn't take too long to get it done. And... Uh, after that, we'll start putting on the resilient channeling, but we'll tune in a little bit later and let you know how it goes. Until then, we'll see ya. Hello once again, studio builders across the nation. Uh, an update here as to our last tapage and that is we have the vapor barrier up now which is a six mil poly good strong stuff as well as our resilient channeling which is Spaced at 24 inch centers along all the walls, as you can see. And on the ceiling, I added some extra channel because I felt that we're going to need uh, a little bit more support up there, as, uh, as being the ceiling is going to have quite a few layers on it as well. So I went 16 inch centers instead of 24 just for peace of mind I guess the uh, next biggest job that was done here was taking off I don't know if you remember uh, there's probably a, a shot of the old uh, exterior of the house which was all the siding on here so I stripped that all off and landed up doing a bit more than I anticipated uh, due to the fact that when I stripped away all the siding and under layers uh, I got to the insulation point here and all there was was a uh, well some of the older pink insulation that they had put in the house during the 70s when this house was built and it was starting to sag in between the studs and uh, just wasn't adequate enough so I stripped it out and I ended up putting in the rock sool here for some uh, 
better soundproofing for sure. Uh, so what we're going to do here is put resilient channeling on here. It's the same as is uh, on the ceiling and the walls, and uh, probably and land up doing the same layering technique uh, with the materials on this portion too. The underneath here was stripped away also in the floor joists and there was a little bit of insulation here not much somebody had curled up one bat and sort of stuck it in here uh, so it was between the floor joists it was I would guess about a ten and a half foot run from here back on top of the ceiling inside the third level of the home so I uh, double layered so the, the joists were uh, I think they were nine nine and a half inches finished so I stuck six inches of uh, rock sewer in there double layer all the way back ten and a half feet it's a hassle if you're ever doing this because you gotta work around existing wiring that uh, was run through the house to the ceiling fixtures inside and uh, you gotta have some patience and uh, it was quite a quite a little job it took a little longer than I anticipated also as well I took out, I rammed both both of the uh, ducts that were in the basement and we don't usually use them anyways uh, or on the third floor mind you uh, we don't use them we have a gas stove on the third level so that's adequate to heat the lower portion of the home so I just ran these ducts out it wasn't that bad actually it uh, had to reach in there about three feet cut some bracing off and just to get some extender uh, uh, tubes, duct tubes, and uh, run them out. So it worked out pretty good. So we've got a couple of them here. We've got one there, and there's one over here also. So uh, for the air conditioning and the heating, I think it'll be adequate enough to, to heat the volume of this room. And if not, I can always get some uh, type of little uh, construction heater in here and put it, put it on momentarily. But I think once this room sealed off. It's going to hold the heat in here pretty good. I don't think we're going to have a problem with uh, with any uh, control on the temperature. As well, there, uh, there's I don't know if you remember, but I think I did take a shot of this. Used to be the old uh, soffit up in this area here. I stripped it away, and uh, all, pretty much all it was was about uh, I don't know maybe a quarter inch piece of plywood up there separating uh, the outside world from in here so I stripped it out and uh, put in the Roxel insulation and I also braced put extra bracing on that fascia board the old fascia board that they attached this sunroom onto uh, I put some good steel four inch uh, four and a half inch steel brackets to uh, going from the fascia board on to the uh, ceiling joists of this room for extra support and as well underneath the rock sewer where the uh, trusses from the garage are holding the fascia board I put some what they call gossip bra brackets there uh, that fit in on either side of the truss where it meets the uh, fascia board and uh, put one on each side for extra bracing as well. Added a 2x2 two two, as you can see screwed it into the fascia board and there's some uh, 3 inch brackets right there holding that up so it's 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 got a lot of support now I don't think we're gonna have a problem uh, just a little added protection for the weight that the ceiling is gonna have to hold and as well just for extra support I put a 2 by 4 and a 2 by 6 over that and that what, what happened there is you can see and maybe if I can get a shot here if you can see where that 2 by 6 is up against the fascia board that they screwed in 
through the siding into the studs the stud walls now that's that's pretty much all that was holding up the uh, uh, well, the roof of this place so like again just for peace of mind I butted up that 2x6 right up against that t the other 2x6 that's screwed into the wall and that 2x4 it's taking up a space area and that's originally screwed into the studs stud wall and then the 2x6 is screwed on top of uh, the 2x4 and I used 3 inch screws on that 2 on both uh, the 2x6 and 2x2 and there's had to fill in some areas uh, air leakage uh, with the uh, spray foam all along in here and there's an area here that it was pretty much just open and that serves two purposes insect control as well as uh, uh, sound leakage in or out of the building or in the studio I also had to fill in where I cut the siding off here it was pretty much all open uh, against that the uh, where they put the two by two by four support here so it's all filled in with foam all airtight now we shouldn't have a problem now all the when the vapor barrier, barrier was put on you have to seal it to the uh, to the floor and wherever it overlaps so we used use the acoustical caulking and just ran a bead, a good bead, uh, and just pretty much sealed it off here. Anywhere it joins, as well as where it overlaps, two pieces here again, just to seal it off. Just run a bead and just press it on there. It holds pretty good around the doors, and I'll do the same around the windows. And as you can see here, where one sheet met another, it's all sealed off in here as well, all the way along any seams so the next thing we're going to do is uh, finish off this area here put some resilient channeling on here the vapor barrier you don't have to run it's inside the building I'm just going to continue it on the ceiling and uh, and attach it to the uh, 2x6 up here to where it's still open on some portions of the ceiling as well as here there'll be a vapor barrier and your RC channel will run in there and of course on the bottom we'll put some RC channeling and uh, after that I pretty much think it's time to put the electrical together here finish it off that'll entail putting the receptacles in putting the breakers in, in the panel and uh, having to uh, punch a hole through the wall there on the outside into the basement hook it up to the main panel make sure everything works fine get it inspected and then we'll start putting the materials on the wall which should go pretty quick okay so we'll check into uh, in with you somewhere down the line and give you an update when we start getting some of the uh, paneling put on here some of the wall boards so to speak so ciao for now Greetings once again. Here's the latest update on the uh, studio construction. We've got our electrical panel all wired in. Everything's working a okay. As well as uh, the hardboard, three quarter inch medium density hardboard. We've got all that up on our RC channeling. And uh, as well as we 
we've left about an eighth of an inch space and filled it in with the uh, acoustical caulking. And on this end of the room we're starting to put up the drywall. And uh, here we go with the configuration of what we got so far. We got the RC channeling which is break it's uh, off the wall about an eighth of an inch or so, which is great. And then uh, the hardboard and 5H drywall. Those are layers right there. Got a lot of mass, so it should work out fine. The room is actually quite a bit quieter, even uh, with the outside noise, it's cut down quite a bit at this stage, so it's uh, looking good. Now, here's uh, Here's a little error that I made when I was cutting this off. What I should have done was I put this sheet up first so I should have measured to the bottom of the RC channeling that this piece is uh, fixed to and I should have dropped it another three quarters inch so this would have came right down to this area and pretty much sealed it off. But I didn't and I just stuck some rock stool insulation in here just to make up that uh, uh, fill in that space and the same with this area here made the same error so I'll be thinking about that next time I come to one of those when I put the drywall up again we've left the uh, about a quarter inch space from the floor to the bottom of the drywall and we'll fill that in with uh, acoustical caulking just as we did over here with our hardboard. So that's uh, crucial to remember just to keep that airspace in between to uh, cut down on the uh, vibration uh, transmission throughout the whole structure. Uh, just a little note on the spacing of the screws. This is pretty heavy stuff, this board three quarter inch so I've spaced these out, the screws ten inches apart and uh, on the drywall I went a little wider I went 12 inches so we're looking at about 45 drywall screws holding each sheet in and a little bit less for the hardboard because it's uh, only adhered to uh, four channels on the walls so just keep that in mind if you're using the heavy stuff you want to put a little bit more support in it as well with the ceiling I'll probably space the screws out about eight inches apart because uh, it's a lot of weight that's going to be hanging off of these tracks and we want to make sure it stays up there. So that's about well another thing you may have noticed is there's no windows and the reason for that is that what I've decided to do is cover the four window openings that I left and I'm going to just take the windows out on the outside and I'm just going to cut out along the frame from the outside to the inside and that'll enable me to cut out a block the size of the window all finished, it'll have the paneling on it so I can, I can then use that to build my window inserts which will be well, probably about four inches thick or so so when I am recording I can just stick that in the opening of the window and it'll be like a sealed off wall just to keep it quieter in here and I'm going to change the windows probably put triple pane windows in uh, just to give me some added sound reinforcement or sound uh, dampening peace of mind so that's basically uh, so that's uh, Alright, so that's it for this update, and uh, we'll check in with you as soon as we get some, some more work done. Ciao for now.
Okay, folks, welcome back. It's been about four weeks since we uh, our last update. Uh, as you can see, we've come quite a ways, and uh, we finished all the drywall on the walls as well as the ceiling. is uh, has the two layers plus the one layer of acoustical tile. So basically, I guess what we got on the uh, ceiling here now. Let me give you an idea. Acoustical tile 5 8 so there are three layers hanging on the ceiling there. It's holding up well. It hasn't caved in on us, so it's going to be there for hopefully ever. And then you got your 3 quarters, your 5 8 and your 5 8 It's a lot of, uh, lots of density there, that's what you need. And uh, we just came up with a little bit of a device to put the uh, ceiling tile on the ceiling. Due to the fact that it is an angled ceiling up there, we just took some kitchen hinges, had laying around some uh, spare uh, wood and some two by twos, and just put that hinge on there, and you can pretty much get any angle you want to put that ceiling tile up. So it worked out really slick, and that's basically uh, how we went about it right there. This uh, eight foot two by twos. And uh, we used the good glue again, Bulldog Grip Premium. It's really strong stuff, and uh, I recommend it highly. Some of that cheaper stuff you'll find uh, it doesn't cheer very well, and uh, some of the th some of the uh, tiles might buckle on you or, or uh, separate from the wall. I haven't had a problem with that using this uh, product, so it's a little more expensive, about seven bucks a tube. And I made the decision to go and also ceiling tile the side. We used to be the aluminum siding up there, and the reason for that is I uh, a little bit of reading and thought about it, and uh, because I'm going to leave a lot of this brick exposed. Oh well, actually all the brick is going to be exposed. Uh, I was kind of worried about some uh, unwanted reflections in the room. So uh, the idea behind that is uh, a little bit more absorption up here. Uh, you know, from the reflection of the sound off the walls and the ceiling. So we don't run into too much, uh, what do they call, flutter echo problems. As well as we did the underneath here. Just to control. Some more reflections. Again, we uh, sealed up any cracks that might... Uh, might not have been uh, well because of this this area here was a little bit off in the original construction so yeah you know nothing major just some some little gaps in there maybe an eighth of an inch so as usual seal that off with acoustical caulking just to cut down on any leakage of sound into the house or from the house of course into here and uh, we'll make this look nice in the end with some uh, some corner molding here I'll just Go up there like that. Maybe something a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger, just to cover that seam there. And uh, as well, we'll do the same thing, covering up these joints in the ceiling tiles we did downstairs. And we'll be using uh, what they call a par close molding. Of course, again, like downstairs in the in the control room, we'll be putting that over in a grid pattern that way and then this way as well as the ceiling this will be the last stage so uh, I guess after after uh, the ceiling tile is up I'm going to get on to putting the paneling last layer of finished paneling uh, mahogany paneling on the walls here and then we'll we're going to get some doors. Put a double door system in here again. And then, as well as there will be a double door system. I probably mentioned this before, but reiterating a bit, I guess. Then the last stage will be the flooring. Uh, I got the subfloor, as I sh showed you earlier in the video. And I believe I'm going to uh, land up going with some carpeting. In the end, I was kind of 
uh, deciding whether hardwood floors or carpeting but I believe uh, because this room is a little bit narrow with hardwood floors I think the reflections might be a bit much to control uh, especially with drums or uh, uh, percussion so we're going to go with the carpeting so that works and uh, you know I can always build some uh, sort of mobile hardwood floor areas I can just put in here if I wanted to liven up the room a bit more uh, I looked in the cork flooring but that's extremely expensive for this room it would be about $1700 maybe somewhere down the line but not at this uh, not uh, in the initial uh, stages here so that's about it for now and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can with some, some more progress Ciao for now. Hey folks, we're back with an update. Uh, since last we spoke, I've put up the light fixtures, three fixtures in the room, the same ones that are downstairs. I have the purple uh, kind of a illumination. As well, as you can see, all the ceiling tile has been put up. The ceiling is up there, it's not coming down, that's a good thing. There's a lot of weight up there, but uh, when you do the pre-construction properly, it works. As you can see, the paneling has been put up. Solid mahogany paneling. Uh, I think that's an eighth of an inch thick. The same uh, paneling we put in in the control room downstairs. So that turned out well. Uh, got lucky and got into a batch all the same run so all the grains matched up nicely and as well as the tone something you might want to look at when you're putting a room together if you can get uh, a skid that comes in the same lot off the same lot uh, at the lumber yard it usually matches pretty good and as you can see we're uh, just about finished completing the uh, floor the pseudo floating floor as I like to call it and I'll show you exactly how we we got into this. First thing you got to do is uh, got to offset your rows. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a uh, you start your first row off and you sort of cut it about half panel so you can stagger so all the joints interlock with each other. So the first first uh, row I started over here behind all that was uh, started off with a half a panel in length and then uh, the full panel of course after that and then when you get to the end of the room it's de depending on uh, on the length of your room you might have to cut a panel to fit in or you might just luck out and a whole panel will fit in there but then on, on your second row of course you'd start off with a full length panel and then just alternate that all the way through the width of your room so your panels uh, all so the joints don't uh, line up they stagger it locks the floor in nicely so you won't find it lifting on you as well you'll need to uh, put quarter inch spacers between your wall and the panel this provides expansion room uh, especially down in this part of the province it's humid so this floor is going to expand and contract uh, expand in the winter contract or sorry expand in the summer contract in the winter so you have some movement so your tiles don't expand and butt up against the floor and start to buckle and lift what I've used for the uh, spacers is just uh, you can buy at any hardware store it's uh, one quarter inch by two inch poplar and just cut that up into about two inch lengths 
and uh, you're on your way. Cheap way to do it. Bingo. Again, these are the panels we're using. Uh, I guess they're about two by two. And on the back, you've got your kind of a floating floor material on the back here, vinyl that they've adhered to the back. Now, what you'll need to do is you'll have to buy some of these spacers, uh, or it's not spacers, sorry, shims, and. Uh, Unless your floor is almost bang on level, I can guarantee you're going to go through a lot of these. I know I did, I didn't anticipate the amount I'm going through, but regardless, it has to be done. You'll have to just put panel by panel down, find out where your low spots are and shim up accordingly to get the floor as level as you possibly can. Uh, also, to uh, all you need is some electrical tape. I've been using electrical tape anyways, and you just put your shim down where you need it and just a couple small pieces of black electrical tape just to hold it on there while you flip it over and that uh, works out pretty well. You'll also need a block of wood and a rubber mallet so you don't damage the tongue part of the panel and just to knock gently tap it into place so it butts up nicely to the other panel and uh, they slide in pretty good once the panels leveled off to each other. Just a little bit of look at the clearance here. I guess you've, there's probably a good quarter inch off the floor, so there's a lot of room for air movement in there. And I guess the toughest part of the, of the panel, putting the panel flooring in, is when you get to your, obviously, your row up against the wall, you have to just sort of angle it, angle the panel when you're pointing it in, like that, slide the tongue into the groove and then lay it down and you'll need a pry bar so just so you can get just so you can get the bar in there and just sort of a little push and it slides right up into place with hardly any effort at all. Once your uh, floor is in place if you're planning to put uh, carpeting down which you'll have to do as I am I'm going to put the carpet down here so you'll have to get these one and a half inch L brackets cheap stuff and you'll have to screw it into your wall and just leave it lay on top of your panel. Don't screw into the panel. The idea for this is when they put the carpet in and they put their tack strips along the edge of the wall, what happens if you don't have these brackets on once they start pulling, kicking and pulling the, the carpet to get it tight and lay it properly, if you don't have these all brackets, this whole floor will just start lifting up like this on the edges. So make sure that you put these on if you're putting carpeting in. Another material I've found to uh, apply to some of the, uh, I guess, exposed cement areas, foundation, is this, uh, I think it's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. It's cork, acoustical cork. You can buy it at the Home Depot or the building box. It's relatively cheap. and. Uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to glue it, the construction glue, just up against all the remaining foundation, exposed foundation that's in the room, and uh, which would be in the stairwell here, as well as this area from the floor up to the brick, and that runs, of course, all the way down, just the one along the one wall. Uh, it's a good starting point for controlling the acoustics of the room. So I'm going to give it a shot anyways. I have to uh, put additional acoustical foam up later. Uh, well, we'll have to see about that after we do our tests. Okay, I'm just going to backtrack here a little bit. I'm not sure if I, uh, I know I'm sure I didn't talk about how I adhered the paneling to the drywall. But uh, basically, I use this stuff right here. Bulldog Grip Premium. Premium. Pay the extra money. Get the premium. It's worth it. Uh, good adhesive. Anyways, just put that on the panel. Ford Bay panel or whatever and stick it up there. Press it on firmly as well. Let's just take your finishing nails and 
every I guess foot I guess a foot tops around the whole panel bottom around the whole perimeter of the panel just tack it on there just to uh, give it a little bit more holding power Welcome to another episode of Studio Building, ladies and gents. Uh, I guess since the last time we spoke, uh, what we have completed here is, for starters, the entire subfloor is now in. And it actually worked out very well in the end. As well as uh, we touched on the, the cork that we were going to around the edges just to cover some of the cement to uh, control some of the uh, reflections of sound since it is a lot of concrete and brick in here so this is what we have done so far down in the stairwell again all we all I did was uh, just use a bulldog uh, premium glue a little bit on the back of the panels and stick it on there and it works just fine. And uh, just had to leave the, the bottom open a bit around the entire room so the carpet layers can uh, work without uh, chipping away at the cork you might say. I'll finish it off once the carpet is in. Also we bought our part close uh, strapping and started to finish off as much as we could on the wall and the ceiling. The entire grid on the ceiling is done. Uh, this is the same, the same method that was used in the uh, control room in the basement. Although I might mention that uh, when doing this type of work, invest in a good miter saw. This one here costs about 50, 50 bucks. And uh, the nice thing about it is it's rub the dust off here. It's got it's got all the angles here that you're gonna need. And it's pretty slick. Just wheel her around get a nice straight cut every time. Worth the money. Heck of a lot better than your five dollar miter box. Now as you can see the doors have been put in, I, uh, again I, as in the studio control room, I did the, uh, framed them in here with, uh, I think it's 2 by 6 and again I've got a double door system here, as you can see, with the uh, good neoprene seals, aluminum, and they're they're changeable if they do happen to wear out, but uh, I don't think you'd have to worry about that for some time. Again, got heavy duty hinges here as these doors are extremely heavy. Good hinges, three on each door. And again, these doors were picked up at a demolition business in the city. And uh, they're from the hospital. And they're probably again they're five hundred, six hundred dollars, just six hundred dollar door new. And uh, I picked them up for a hundred dollars a door. So, and they're in perfect condition. And uh, we weighed them, and they weigh 90, 90 pounds a door. So, solid and heavy, double door system. Definitely keeping any outside noise out. As you can probably hear the background noise there when I shut these doors. You're not uh, getting any any leakage into the building. Good lock systems so nobody gets in. On the insides the deadbolt as well because you never know these days. 
Again, we got a couple more doors here from the entrance from the garage. This one's all all trimmed up here on the inside. So it worked out quite well. Again, same idea here. Double door system. Keep the noise out. And any noise in, in. As to not disturb the neighbors. So basically now I'm just waiting uh, for the carpet layers. They should show up today sometime in the afternoon. And uh, once they lay the carpet in, we're going to finish off, uh, of course, the door trim on this one, as it can't be done before the carpet's laid. And uh, once it is laid, we'll continue to finish off our part close molding on the seams of the paneling. And then we'll put our baseboard on, 3 inch baseboard. And when that happens, I'll get back to you for an update. Until then, happy recording. Welcome back for a little bit of an update here. Since yesterday, uh, the 9th of October, uh, the guys came in yesterday afternoon about 4 o'clock and installed the carpet. So it's kind of really looking nice now with that finished touch here. Brightens the room up uh, quite a bit. Just being uh, definitely a much lighter tone than the, the uh, subfloor was. So that's what it looks like. Uh, they did a good job. Everything looks to seem, or seems to be, and it's nice and tight and around the edges and that, down the stairwell. And I'll be starting the baseboard trim right now as a matter of fact and uh, finishing off the rest of the trim on the uh, on the walls of course to join up with this so that's about it I'll be back in touch shortly All right, here we are, Studio Builders. Got the finished product here. I'll give you a, a look, see what we did. I'll just pan around the room, give you a general idea of what it looks like uh, completed. Well, I got a PA system in here right now that I'm uh, kind of tweaking, so it's very cluttered up. Uh, normally all this stuff isn't in here, obviously. There you go. Yeah, um, finished off the ceiling. Just put a little some park close molding here. Again, strap the uh, ceiling up to give it a finished look. Mahogany paneling, and we got our foams here. The Twelve by twelve by two inch uh, pyramids. We've got some base traps. The corners definitely going to add some more. Uh, probably another another two feet of uh, base trap in each corner here. Uh, now the foam I, I picked up at a place called the Foam Factory. Uh, this portion of the foam, the pyramids, and uh, it's very high quality material, just like RLX, but a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper, and. Uh, over here we've got some four inch shards, the low mids that we were having a problem with, so that kind of tamed things down for us. And we've got some foam diffusers strategically placed um, after some audio testing in the room. 
and uh, the diffusers I've got at a place called uh, HSF Home Studio Foam. Look them up on the internet. Another great product, extremely cheap for the quality of the material. And uh, we put in some sound panels here that uh, we are getting some uh, well, flutter echo in here and uh, between the uh, ends and some axial mode problems but uh, with all the foam in place and, uh, and the sound panels uh, yeah we it tamed it out pretty good actually the room sounds really nice and I actually got these at uh, we're at the same place I got my doors at this demolition demolition <laughs> demolition business in the city and uh, cheap uh, 25 bucks a panel and to buy them new they're uh, 150 bucks at least so that saved a lot of money right there and they're great they work fine all right walk around this way here give you a look again we got some sound panels in certain other places now this one I had to put up on this door here because what we're getting is a real bad flutter echo between this area here in the door and and over here at this door and uh, by putting that panel up and then putting up what we used here is some um, packing blankets here moving blankets bought them cheap on the internet eBay and we just glued them together to get the length that we needed and we used a glue gun and they, it holds great no indication of this stuff coming apart so that worked out good now the reason we did that is uh, gives us an opportunity in certain applications of recording if we're finding we're getting you know a certain uh, standing wave that is causing us a problem especially in the low frequencies uh, when you're doing uh, recording the drums it allows us to uh, slide these blankets back and forth off the wall and we can in that uh, in that way we can uh, control some of the uh, nodes and anti nodes of uh, uh, the second half of this series proper foams and soundproofing acoustical uh, products and uh, get your room tuned in as best you can it's not really that difficult to do and it's really not that difficult to understand uh, a little bit of the physics behind what goes on with the sound waves and the problems that you you might uh, you might run across as well you know the blankets also give us an opportunity to cover the brick here if we want a, a deader sound if we want a livelier sound of course we open it up to get more reflections off the brick um, again these panels here we had to uh, put them in because we're getting a little bit of too much reflection down this little stairwell here which is uh, interesting for a studio I know but uh, like I say this is a back sunroom at one time so we had to uh, utilize it as best as possible um, I was going to build a platform actually actually off the stair here and just put a mount over there and just like be able to put a piece of wood here uh, you know like a platform here uh, you could stand on uh, I haven't done that something is a thought perhaps somewhere down the line but uh, interestingly enough uh, I put guitar amps down here and uh, for certain you know types of sounds and it actually it's pretty versatile it gives it a lot of different sounds you know, I mean you can utilize it to your uh, 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 to your strengths or your benefits if need be um, yeah so that's a little different twist and we like we've got some hard surfaces as well here that uh, are giving us some pretty nice reflections if needed and uh, again that's why I put the carpet down instead of the hardwood because of all the brick uh, in here and the other hard surfaces I need a little bit something on the floor uh, just to tame things down a bit again we have double door system here cheap doors 100 bucks a pop the bigger ones were in 130 pounds or so and the uh, uh, 32 inch doors were that much weighed that much and then uh, you know the narrow doors are in like about I don't know 80 90 pounds so there's a lot of mass there the price is right 
and uh, check your city out somewhere there's probably a demolition place so you can pick up a lot of these materials for uh, an absolute steal and like I said I probably mentioned before more than once these doors new are at like 800 bucks a door so you can get some good deals uh, double doors just to get into the garage area here of course definitely needed in this part of the house so uh, you keep the noise out and uh, some industrial neoprene jams here that I put in they uh, I think mean, it was like 25 bucks a kit but it's worth it really good material neoprene here it's not going to wear down uh, or split on you so uh, it's something to think about if you're doing that kind of a system see over here uh, a playback system here some JBL 4206's passive monitors just so you know obviously the uh, the uh, artist can get a quick hear of what they're doing you know it's just an amplifier there and uh, a couple other odds and ends I don't know we got some old old vinyl records you got to have the vinyl sounds good and even got a ooh, look at that old a track right there still works as well mic stands pick them up on the on uh, on eBay uh, like I got a I got a box of these things probably about <clears throat> 10 of them I think it was for like under 200 bucks so that was pretty good I mean not the best but they do serve the purpose uh, you know these mics these Hercules stands here are a little bit more heavy duty but uh, you know for the price these are really good good buy can't complain yeah, a few amplifiers there going on Herky bass rig or four uh, four tens anyways Hydro Drive, David Eden World Tour 800, nice amp, nice bass amp, really high quality stuff, got some really good sounds out of that. Yamaha Recording Custom, 80s, uh, the initial 80s, or uh, the original 80s uh, version right there. They say it was the most recorded drum set in history, I don't know, but uh, I heard a lot of good things about them in the, before I bought them. And I got an opportunity to get the set for a really decent price. So I went in, and there's birch shells. I mean, they really sound good. They're actually a great sound drum. Can't take anything away from them. Uh, yeah, we've got, what I did here, just uh, took some old scrap material I had laying around. And I uh, just built some cable holders. Bought some dowel, drilled some holes. You know, put a bunch of dowel in there and it's an easy cheap way to get uh, organized with your cables there's a patch panel here 24 channel runs down in the control room of course uh, just mounted right on the cement wall there so it's it's anchored securely enough it's not going anywhere now this is an old uh, actually this is my first first recording uh, digital recording desk or whatever you want to call it it's a task cam no uh, i don't know it came out back in like in the 90s or something or something like that late 90s the uh, mini disc 564 that's pretty much retired except I, what i do is i use that for uh, like a uh, like a headphone amp i just run it in off this panel from the control room boom so the guys can come in here and uh you know put their own head mix together Headphone mixed together, and that's a Alesis 32. Pretty much use that for the same purpose. And they're cheap to buy too if you want to buy them. Like they're only a couple hundred bucks now. Put a little stair in there. Wasn't too tough to do. So yeah, there you have it. I'm not sure if I missed anything, but uh, pretty much covers I think. What went on here for the build and uh, I got the completed room here and it's uh, it's working out pretty good obviously done some recordings and uh, we're getting we're getting to learn the room a lot better each time you use it and uh, it's uh, serving us well there's no doubt about it yeah so this is a 
other double door system that goes out to the real world. To the backyard. If I can open this thing. There you go. Works nicely, keeps the sound out. Gotta have the double doors. So that's it. Hope this helps some people out somewhere. If you're building your own studio. It's uh, it takes some time, there's no doubt about it. But uh, you know what? In the end it's well worth it. You get yourself a room that you're uh, you can do some really decent recording in. And again, as everybody knows, no room's perfect. Not even a uh, professional studio, million dollar studios, they've still got their problems with their uh, standing waves and they have to uh, treat things accordingly as well. But uh, take your room, utilize as best you can, a little bit of research. Uh, the book that actually I used to get a lot of good information was uh, Paul White. He has a uh, paperback out uh, just on studio building and he's got a lot of good information in there but again there's there's tons of sources you can uh, look up now on the internet so I can help you along as well and uh, yeah so there you go folks good luck in your build